Hi and welcome. Thanks for joining me here as we uh, look at another one of these opportunities for me to share with you from God's Word uh, in the intimacy of, I guess, through this media. So join with me. If you have a Bible, please turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. This is an important topic because we have this wonderful week coming up, this holy week that begins with Palm Sunday and goes through Good Friday and into the Resurrection Sunday, our Easter. And I want us to be well prepared for it. I want us to be uh, thoroughly equipped so that we can enjoy it to its fullest and we can engage together as a body and we can encourage one another and we can do what it is that we are put on this earth to do and that's to glorify our Father in Heaven. So as we glorify our Father in Heaven, we want to do something on Good Friday that is our normal tradition. Normally we do it together, we do it at the church proper, and here we're going to be restricted as a result of the virus that's going around. We are going to now partake communion in our own homes. So I want you to be prepared uh, physically for it, and I want you to be prepared spiritually for it. So first, let me get the elements out of the way. <clears throat> beside me, what you see here is a, a cup with grape juice in it, and then beside it is a piece of pita bread or unleavened bread. You can substitute a cracker. You do not have to get too overwhelmed by it. What you want to do is you want to make sure that it's not, it's not the condition of the bread, it's the condition of the heart that's the issue. So when we look at these things, <clears throat> excuse me, we need to make sure that we're, that we're on, on topic and on point with what the Word of God has to say. Now, uh, join me in a word of prayer. Father, as we go to your Word, we ask you to speak to our hearts, help us to know you better, and to be uh, better involved in what it is that you have for us, and to know you at, at the level of intimacy that is even deeper and deeper every day. May you be pleased with us, and may we glorify you, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Paul is writing to the church at Corinth, and as he writes to the church at Corinth in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, he gets down to verse 22, and he says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. So let's look at what the requirements are for communion. One, we have to have the cup and we have to have the bread. They took this initially at the Passover meal. They took this initially as they were <clears throat> celebrating in the midst of a plague, that as the nation of Israel was being delivered from Egypt in bondage, that God was taking them out of that bondage and sent this Passover angel to come and pass over the houses that had the blood of the lamb sprinkled on their doorpost and the lintel of their house. And that angel would pass over that house. That's where the term Passover comes from. They ate their meal in haste. One of the elements of the meal was a cup, and they drank of the cup several times throughout their dinner, and they took of the bread. The bread was an unleavened bread because they removed any leaven as yeast. They took all of the yeast out of their house, the yeast, the leaven, that was a symbol of that which puffs up and it causes this decaying process. So therefore, it is a type of sin. And they had to remove that from their homes. So we, over the next few days, we have an opportunity to purge our hearts and our homes of anything that shouldn't be there. We can walk through and say, Lord, if there's something that needs to go, get rid of it. If there's something we're not doing that we should be doing, let's do that. Let's get our hearts right. Let's get our preparation in. It's not, again, just about having the right bread. It's about having the right heart. So when we do this and we look to these things, the church at Corinth, they made many mistakes and they had some bad decisions going on. And when they celebrated the communion, they were doing some terrible things. One is they were, uh, they were abusing their brothers. They were neglecting those who were needy. The second is they were, they were enjoying it without giving it that which is the solemnity that it deserves. It requires that, that it be given the sobriety of Jesus Christ having paid the penalty for our sin. And because of that, we have to give it that which is, is that sanctity that is, it's due. 
So in doing that, we need to make sure that we have reverence for God himself in the midst of it, and we're not just doing it flippantly. Uh, sometimes I use the phrase willy-nilly. Yep, don't do it that way. Haphazard is another one. We need to do it with uh, the concern and the care that, that it is due. Now, the church at Corinth, they were not only doing that, but then they were getting drunk as a result of it, which, of course, I, I don't need to go into saying, don't be drunk, stop bad behaviors and any form and certainly don't bring it into the house of God and claim it as a part of worship. So as we partake of the elements in our home, we're going to do it in the way that it was offered. That when Jesus Christ was presenting this cup and this bread, he said, this cup is my, it represents my blood shed for you for the remission of sin. It's here to give you this wonderful opportunity for you not to have the penalty of your sin anymore. I've paid it because of my blood. And the, the bread represents my body, which is broken for you. I'm going to give my very self to you. And you get to be a partaker of me and with me. And then you get to give me out into the world. Isn't that a wonderful gift that he has given us? So we have to take that very seriously. Now, the church at Corinth, of course, they have not done that. And because they didn't, Paul gives this admonition. And in verse 27, we read, Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an other unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Then there are the consequences, and the consequences are, For this reason many are weak and sick among you, and many have passed away or asleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we're chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the world. So what, what Paul is in conclusion saying is that if you take this lightly, if you do it flippantly, if your heart is not right, several things are going to happen. One is you're going to eat and drink judgment to yourself. And I as a pastor do not want that to be the case. I want us to recognize that which is the depth, the gravity of taking communion. Now, when we do this, the great price that was paid is the cost of Jesus' own body and his blood. The very redemption that we have is all because of what he has accomplished for us. So the great privilege we have is to take this with great joy. Now, we also have to make sure our hearts are right. The first thing that is the admonishment, that is the correction that it was necessary to the church at Corinth, is they did not have humility. They, they were prideful and arrogant, and they failed to care about others in their body and in their fellowship. It was a me-first society. There's no place for that in the house of God. It has to be others first. You will love the Lord your God with your heart, soul, and mind. You will love your neighbor as much as you love yourself. We're not commanded to love ourselves. God knows we already love ourselves. We need to love our neighbor as much as we love ourselves. So we need to walk in that humility. The second is Jesus Christ, he had the opportunity before he went to the cross he had the opportunity to pray. And one of the things that he prayed is he prayed for unity. And he prayed for unity in the body, which means if you have something against your brother or your sister, work it out before you come together and take the elements of communion. Make sure you're not harboring a grudge or some uh, difficulty between you and another member of the body of Christ. We need to maintain you. his blood paid the penalty so that we don't have to bear the, the pain and the sorrow and the guilt of these things if we do not work it out, we miss a great opportunity. So don't come to the communion table harboring a grudge or harboring something against your brother or sister. Work it out. Take care of it first. You know, the, again, the admonition is even before you come and offer your offering, please go and work it out with your brother. Then come back and offer your offering because Jesus Christ came to bring this magnificent unity. Now, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to examine ourselves. And we're supposed to examine ourselves so that we don't eat and drink in an unworthy manner. There are two highlights for an unworthy manner. The first is, am I in Christ? Because what I'm saying is I recognize that Jesus Christ went to the cross at Calvary. That he died and he paid his blood as a payment for sin. Have I invited him to be my savior to have covered my sin with his blood? And if I have not, then I mock him. And I say, yes, I know you went to the cross at Calvary, and you may have gone for others, but not for me. Let me take that cup, 
that is a cup of judgment. Don't do that. The bread says, I am a partaker in Christ. Christ is in me. If Christ is not in you, please don't take the bread. As we look at these things, make sure that we have that first one done, and that is, am I in Christ? The second is, is there anything that is hindering me in my relationship with God? Do I have anything that needs to go? Any unconfessed sin in my life? Deal with it. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us, cleanse us of all unrighteousness. If we say we have no sin, we lie. And we make God a liar because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So all of these things are necessary. So make sure that we have all of this. And then when we come to the table and we take the elements together, we're going to take and we're going to pray. And I'm going to lead us through it on uh, Good Friday as we come together. So please prepare. Have a cup of juice. Have some broken bread at the ready. Have your Bibles open. Have a willing heart. And have a heart that, that says, Lord, I thank you for all that you have done. I look forward to spending time uh, over the next few days in this magnificent week with you guys. May God bless you. Let's pray. Father, it is good to be part of your family, and we invite you into every aspect of this ministry. And Lord, we may be separated uh, you know, by, um, as a result of this disease, but Father, we're unified in you. And you haven't gone anywhere, and this did not catch you off guard. But we simply want to be uh, honoring of you and utilize the tools and opportunities that we have, even in the midst of this. So be pleased with us. Help us take full advantage of these opportunities and be glorified. We ask in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. God bless you guys.